Mr. Beast about Lenny Tony's sin story, and to get way for his crap and listen to false story of Lenny Tony. Sin Story on Together by Lenny Tony examines the multifaceted nature of sin and its impact on individual lives and society. The text argues that sin is not merely a transgression against religious or moral laws, but a complex interplay of personal choices, societal influences, and psychological factors. The author emphasizes that understanding sin requires a deeper exploration of its root causes, which often stem from societal expectations, cultural narratives, and individual psychological struggles. Tony highlights that sin can lead to feelings of guilt and shame, which may hinder personal growth and moral development. The narrative further addresses how societal perceptions of sin are frequently shaped by historical and cultural contexts, creating a collective understanding of right and wrong that can differ dramatically across communities. By examining case studies and historical examples, the text reveals that actions considered sinful in one era or culture may be viewed differently in another, emphasizing the fluidity of moral standards over time. This perspective encourages readers to critically analyze their own views on morality and to consider how empathy and understanding can foster a more compassionate approach to sin and its consequences. Tony also explores the role of forgiveness, both from others and oneself, suggesting that redemption and healing are possible even after committing acts deemed sinful. The author argues that addressing the underlying issues that lead to sinful behavior can facilitate personal growth and societal change. By looking beyond the simplistic dichotomy of good versus evil, Tony advocates for a nuanced perspective that recognizes human complexity and the potential for transformation. Overall, Sin Story Untogether challenges readers to reconsider their definitions of sin and to embrace a path toward understanding, forgiveness, and personal evolution, ultimately promoting a more just and empathetic society. Through this discourse, Tony invites a critical reflection on morality, redemption, and the human experience. This is all about you, for you. You give me the inspiration to write to live again. You made me feel special and loved again. Then you left me. I will always remember you hoping for you. You will always be the man that I need since you turn my story in another direction. You made me change it. I hope someday you will stop running away from me there. As a moment between a glance and a kiss when the world stops. For the briefest of times and the only thing between us is the anticipation of your kiss on mine. A moment, so intense, it hangs in the air as it pulls us closer. A moment, so perfect, that when it comes to an end we realize it's only just beginning. Prologue Well, let's get started. I'm Danielle, or Danny as my friends call me. I've been spending my most exciting years, the 18th, and we can say that I'm an adult. This year I have finished high school in economic direction, spent a crazy vacation, and now it's time for college. In Ljubljana, the capital of the country of Slovenia, I will be studying at the Faculty of Hotel Management. Am I famous? No. Do they know me in town? Probably. I come from a small town where everyone knows each other, and that's why it's very possible that they know me too. But in case you hear something bad about me, don't believe them. If you let me, I will tell you a little bit about myself. Actually, I'd better tell you everything. I'll tell you how it all started. And how it ended. Everything from my relocation, from hometown to student settlement, moving to a new apartment, about the first meeting with my roommate Ella, who will become my new best friend, my partner in crime, to meeting new friends, new lectures, new jobs, new adventures, new discoveries, new love. Ready? Okay, here we go. Let me take you into my story. One, a little about me. I'm one of the average girls who lives her life and who wants her life to be perfect and all about that happily ever after. I love fashion, music, books, good parties, good friends. 
I like meeting new people. I love to make new friendships. I want to travel around, discover new places, enjoy my life even more than I am enjoying right now at this moment. How do I look? Friendly, I guess. Oh, you meant on the outside. Well, I am definitely not like one of the supermodels on the catwalk. I am 172 centimeters tall, and my weight is 63 kilograms. I have medium short hair colored in ombre brown and blonde highlights. Sometimes they are straight, next day curly, and the day when I am in a bad mood, they are a mess. My natural eye color is dark brown, almost black, but you will not be seeing it because I wear contact lenses in different colors, from blue, green, gray. I just love my eyes. When I put my makeup on and then I like to emphasize my eyes more than anything. Dramatic look and dark colors is my favorites. And as I said before, I love fashion too. Nice clothes, beautiful accessories that is a big win for me. I like different clothes, asymmetric tops, ripped jeans, unusual t-shirts, leather. I am a simple girl who wants to look attractive, look beautiful. Rock style is the best of the best. I like to look a little different. But anyway, attractive for myself and for others. Then there are my friends in my hometown, I love them all. I will be missing them, but the good thing is that Skype and Messenger exist. We will be in touch every day or like every hour. I can listen and talk, give advice and offer my shoulder to cry on it. I would do anything for them and as I say so I mean it. Maybe that's why they love me too. My girls Sabrina, Jasmine and Moitza. I would die without them. They know my secrets and I know theirs. Bounded forever. But my time has come, I am moving to Ljubljana in just a few days, and I am feeling that I am kinda living them behind. They will be always on my mind and deep in my heart. There is also someone else, my boyfriend Yan. We are together for four years now. He is younger than me for one year, so that means he is still in high school. I don't feel anything when I am with him, no passion, no love. It's obvious that we are staying together for the joy of our parents, who are very happy and excited to plan our wedding since we were like five years old. Thinking about grandchildren too. Like I said, I don't love him anymore and I think he knows that. I believe this is the end for us, for him. Even if he is saying to me that he will wait for me as long as he has to, he doesn't need to, but I couldn't say to him those words. That words would break him. He still loves me, or he is very good at pretending. We fall in love to young. All we have now is a habit. I am glad that I am leaving him behind, so I could just manage my mind for a little. Think about the thing that I want to do. And escaping family madness that is a good thing too. I am really looking forward to moving away. 2. Moving into a new flat. Today is my last day at home. I am sitting on the floor in my room and I packing in boxes the last things that I'm going to take with me to my new flat in student settlement. My day is here. I got up early in the morning so I could take the last boxes in the car. My moment came, I looked back at home. I sat in the car and drove towards a new chapter in my life. The journey was not long, and after a good driving hour, I arrived in a student settlement. A student settlement with student homes where our flat was also, was huge. When I drove to the address where Ella was waiting for me, I was more than thrilled. She was standing on the sidewalk laughing happily at me. She was glad, too, that I have finally arrived. She helped me carry boxes and suitcases in the apartment, and then we took the time to clean up my stuff and talk. A very long conversation. Our conversation was based on friendship. I got the feeling I've known her my whole life. We got together right away. We had the same thinking and the same looks on life. We laughed. We joked. We had a great time, our time together. 
When the conversation turned on the boy's theme, I told her my story. The story of Jan, how we fell in love, and how we are together today are just out of habit. How our parents planned to marry since our children's age, and how they dreamed about grandchildren running in their gardens. She was surprised at what she heard, so she calms me up and said to me, You've come to heaven. She was pretty sure I'd find what I'm looking for. New life, new opportunities, new love. But Jan is still my boyfriend until I decide otherwise. The days ran by, and soon I met her best friends, who are now my new best friends. Liam, he has blonde hair and the most beautiful blue eyes I've ever seen. He's very handsome, tall, muscular, and his body is like a draw. For the second year, he studies at the Faculty of Finance and is busy at the bank as a financial advisor. Most important, he is straight. Different girls every weekend. Louis, he's got brown eyes and brown hair. His body is carved to perfection. The muscles, his smooth skin is covered with tattoos. He studies at the Faculty of Civil Engineering and Geodesy. In his spare time, he deals with fashion. He is a model for famous fashion brands. He has no boyfriend. He's single. Olivia Livy. Olivia is a high black-haired girl on long legs. Her dark brown eyes seem like black. She's beautiful, and that's what she knows. The boys are inviting her to date, but she rejects them. She focused on the study of the arts of dance. She wants to become a prima ballerina. The hours of dance lessons take a lot of her time, and despite her half-working time in kindergarten, she is pushing herself even harder to succeed. Brianna Brie, she's like Cinderella. Her long blonde hair, her blue eyes, perfect face, beautiful body made up the perfect girl. She studies at the Faculty of Preschool Education and performs public works in the children's hospital. Kids just love her. She's single and waiting for her Prince Charming to come. Immediately, I was beautifully accepted in their circle of friends. And among us, new stories began. Stories of new friendships, new adventures, new successes and downs, joy and sadness and love. In their society, I felt more than well. At times, I let myself forget the life I left behind, the life where I was unhappy with no goal. My only goal there was an escape, and I have reached that goal. 3. The Lectures Lectures on hotel management began and with great interest, I followed the professors and their interpretations. I was full of energy. I never had enough information. I wanted more every time. Lectures were interesting and as soon as possible I want to test what it looks like when you make the words into action. The only problem right now is the job. After many unsuccessful attempts, I have sent many requests, but the truth I have almost given up. I was used to checking the mail and received a negative answer. And what would I do without my golden Ella? One day we were sitting in a cafe close to the college. We enjoyed the sunny day. It was so warm that you could feel the warmth of the sun touching your skin. The iced coffee was the right choice on this day. We talked, and then Ella told me that at the Blue Sky Hotel, the director was looking for a secretary. I didn't wait at that moment. I signed up and filled out the form on their website. So, and now I can just wait and wait. The days have run by me too fast. Lectures, partying with friends to study for the first exams. In my head have started to form questions. Will I cope with the task if I will be accepted? The days went by, maybe it was a week or two, when they called me from the hotel and told me I was invited to an interview. It was real. It is happening. I was so excited. The week came around quickly and tomorrow is the day, and most important was, I was ready. 4. Interview for the job, first contact. The next day I stood in front of the closet and tried to find the most suitable clothes for today's interview. 
I picked up a black wing skirt over the knee in combination with a jacket, a white shirt with a necktie. I was wearing shoes with a high heel and made a soft makeup. Arranged a hair. I breathed deeply and went to the hotel. The hotel was wonderful and enormous. The building was covered with windows from floor to top. The CEO office was located on the 36th floor, the highest floor. When the elevator rings, I melted off. My hands were sweaty, legs shaky I was fighting with myself. My brains didn't want to listen to any of my commands. I barely managed to pull myself to the reception. When I introduced myself to the receptionist, she politely accompanied me to the big double wooden doors, to the director's office. When I walked in, I noticed a high male figure standing in front of the huge windows that stretched from the floor to the ceiling. When I came in, I noticed a high male figure, which stood in front of the giant window, reaching from the ground to the ceiling. The man, his layout figure was slim but sporty built, the muscles were spotted through the jacket. When a man turned against me, I was most afraid that he noticed how I was staring at his green eyes, his dark hair, which was beautifully shaped and shiny. He smiled at me. He reached my hand and introduced himself to me as Mr. Dan CEO and manager of Blue Sky Hotels. He wore a black dress, a white shirt with a black tie. The view was amazing. This man acted so romantically, so gently. He was worth every thought the hot one I would be allowed to dream. He explained to me what will be covering my work, as his secretary. I listened to him warily. He asked me some questions about me, about schooling, and about my plans after graduation. He was very official and friendly. He was the main reason for Girl's Dream. He was hot and sexy. He told to me that the job was mine. I was happy and ready. The week was around quickly, and there was Monday, the day for a new start. 5. First Day It was the first day of my new job, the beginning of today's day. When I arrived at the receptionist's desk, she received the instructions from Mr. Dan that she must lead me to his office. When I entered, he greeted me and gently squeezed my hand in a welcome. So muscular and so gentle, I have to control myself it in his vicinity and exclude my thoughts about him. He presented me to his colleagues and gave me the first task to arrange the archive of the contracts on partitions and mergers. I would be the director's secretary, his right hand. I will go to meetings with him. I will take notes. I will arrange them and send him to sign. I will go on business trips, business dinners, parties. If I only survive this temptation, I am feeling so strange in his presence, like something is pulling me toward him. I felt an attraction. One day I was sitting at my desk, editing the documents as the doors of his office was open. I caught myself staring at him and admired him with what kind of ease he is doing such a responsible job. There is a gathering in every situation. The man in the right view. I felt something, but I do not know how to explain. When I edited the partnership documents, I found out that they were fighting for a long time on the merger with the Japanese. Perhaps that is the reason that he is all the time on the phone and no other calls are made. Only in Japan. During a lunch break, I usually went to the nearest park and thought about him only. Every time my thoughts escaped, I can draw attention to myself by the fact that he is out of my reach. So successful and powerful. Not the man that is appropriate for me. I guess that I will be left here only with my thoughts and dreams. And focusing on my job in the first place, that is my priority. I love my job so much and I enjoy it. It would be stupid of me if I blow off the opportunity that I have got. Days, weeks, even months have passed at extreme speed. And lately, the job meant everything to me. I felt so well in his vicinity. He was a good teacher, a good leader. 
We attended some very important meetings, which were very helpful in merging with the Japanese. I took notes on important things, examined them, and forwarded them to him to sign them. So tonight, as I did last night, I fell asleep with the thought and the desire to touch him. A romantic meeting, candlelight dinners, gentle whispers. The stories about him were often repeated. And yes, I dreamed and fantasized a lot about him, doing things that I want to do, about things that I needed. I need a little attention, a little love. So tonight, as I did last night, I fell asleep with the thought and the desire to touch him. A romantic meeting, candlelight dinners, gentle whispers, making love with him. The stories about him were often repeated. 6. Performance to dance Days passed quickly, and an invitation to a charity dance arrived at my desk at the end of the week, whose main donor was Blue Sky Hotels. I handed the invitation to Mr. Dan, who invited me to my surprise with him, as his companion. In my apology, I replied that I already have plans for this evening. Negotiations with the Japanese have not yet been completed, but it felt that a good deal is coming to our way shortly. I had a lot of work. My new task was to analyze potential partners. But at any moment, a new thought came over me. The thought of him. And I was already in reality at my desk again. It was Friday afternoon and I was just finished with work and was slowly finishing my work, taking care of the mess on my desk. And then I was ready to leave. Suddenly, it seemed to me that someone called me. I listened attentively and heard the voice again. The voice was coming from Mr. Dan's office. He called me in his office. I slowly stepped in front of him. He was sitting down at his desk. The jacket hung on the back of his chair. The sleeves of his shirt were shuffled. Leaning back on the chair, he watched. Through the window to the night and the lights that gave the charm to the city, the view from his office was amazing. He held a glass of gin in his hands. He seemed tired, vulnerable. His passion for work was not seen. I stepped closer to his desk. He invited me again to join him at tomorrow's dance. I said the same excuse that I already have plans for that evening. Suddenly the thought came by, how I could comfort him and took his shirt off and satisfy him. But instead, I said goodbye and left. When I arrived home, I went to the bathroom, took off my clothes, and stepped under the shower. I let cold water running over my body to help me get rid of the thought of him. Not successful. The desire for him grew from day to day. I slowly began to perceive that I would lose the fight against myself. I was. I will soon be gone. I soon dreamed of having dreams and dreaming with them, live with them, the next morning, I'm standing in front of a mirror. I'm doing my makeup. Today I chose the natural look. My hair was strictly aligned back. Dressed in a black jumpsuit with a red belt and red heels. I was ready for a new day. I started to work out. I like to look pretty, even for him. The doorbell ringed when I opened the door there. I saw a courier holding a black box with a large gray ribbon. When I signed up for the package, I closed the door and put the package on the table. At that moment, I had a thunderous thought in the head, but curiosity overcame me. I slowly lifted the lid of the package and saw a black silky woven in shock. I slowly twisted it and in shock, I found this most beautiful piece of clothing I've ever seen. She was a black silk dress that went slightly above my knees, and at the back was a deep cutout that showed the nakedness of my entire back to the buttocks. On the bottom, there was a black jewelry box with a bow. Inside was a beautiful silver necklace with stars on it and besides card with the message, I hope you will come tonight. Signature D. 7. The Charity Dance The whole day I was marching through the apartment up and down, acting stupid and childish. In the end, I decided to accept the invitation to dance, 
What can I lose? What can I gain? All I know was that I needed was the infinity of time to get dressed, to get prepared. I am accepting an invitation that seemed romantic to me on the one hand, but on the other hand, it was only business. I needed more hours to fix myself. Tumble, shave, makeup, hair. In the end, I have dressed the dress that I got. I looked into the image in a mirror I did not recognize. I was completely different. Sexy, seductive, beautiful. Was it this his plan to look seductive, or did he just wanted to have a hot girl on his right arm? But what is the meaning of necklace? What should that meant? Respect, a reward for good deeds, romantic invitation. I do not know. I called a taxi that drove me to the location, and the series of events were popping up in my head. On the way, I daydream of the possible scenarios of this evening. Many of them were romantic, seductive, gentle, and also mischievous, passionate. I dive in the thought that led me to a place beside the lake, where I sit on the outskirts and look out into the distance. The view was amazing. The sunset was beautiful. His strong hands were slowly making a path over my body. His hand was grabbing me. The sweet dreams of my dream had ended. Is it this the right way to watch my boss like that? As long as everything is in my head does not harm anyone. I slowly climbed up the steps that led to the entrance to the lobby. My heart started to beat faster, and I was astonished by the warmth in the face. I flushed. But why? What can I expect from this evening? I was deeply impressed as I entered the hall where the crowd of important, well-dressed people was. They enjoyed chatting. They were talking about business, friendly speaking. I started to walk through the crowd to find Mr. D. When I slowly moved forward and influenced, he was already standing before me. I saw a familiar male figure before me. He was there. He looked like the most perfect creature in the whole world, as if he was created for me. I can easily imagine how gentle he would be with me, how he would kiss my body, whispering soft and naughty words to my ear while he was putting kisses on my neck. As I dreamed of my dream, I heard a familiar voice brought me back to reality. Mr. D. was wondering if everything is fine or I feel good. When I could only touch him without all the questions, he offered me his hand and invite me to follow him. When we walked against the table, he hugged me and said to my ear that he is happy that I could manage to took my time to join him on this evening. The next moment he moved away, I perceived his smell. Mmm, he smells so good. How awkward I am. I breathed a deep breath to gather his scent but he noticed and smiled sympathetically. Now he was radiating wonderful energy. The people he spoke with ate him from the hands. When we sat at the table where they served us with dinner, he continually watched me and laughed. After dinner was followed and finished after wonderful and delicious food, Mr. D was as the most important donor, also a speaker of the evening. With what elegance he stepped on the stage, I watched the faces of women who stared at him with open mouths. When he began with his speech, his voice ran through my body, I felt it. His speech of success from nothing to wealth and effort, dedication to work, took me to fullness, although I heard only one-fifth of the word at the end. After the conclusion of the speech, standing ovations and exclamations were followed. When he stepped from the stage to the table, the serious look was still on him. Only when he sat back to the table he smiled and started to be him, enjoying the evening. The scene was wonderful and he noticed how my eyes flew to the dance floor. He stood, put his hand in my direction, and invited me to dance with the explanation that the best secretary deserves a little relaxation and pleasure. Am I? Wait, what? The last word was real, but the other was instant impossible at any moment. With a hand in his hand, I danced his hand, but it was over my butt underneath it I felt a strong heat. There were several songs, and it seemed to me like we were alone. 
When the band leader announced that it will just be one dance, he pulled me closer to him. Stronger, there was no space left in between us. I felt his body become tense and hard, but his face and his eyes were quite different. There was a pleasure in them. After finishing our dance, he thanked me and escorted me back to the table. 8. Promotion The evening was very enjoyable, although I have my thoughts on him, about the thought of how could we spend the night together. I become a little nervous. But I did successfully distract myself by a glass of champagne that was in front of me. I watched him and followed his every move. When he suddenly stepped away from the table and grabbed a glass of champagne, he looked after all of us sitting at the table and started speaking. He was a fantastic speaker and a more fantastic man. In the speech, he informed us of an agreement with the Japanese which was to be completed shortly after the plans. He informed us of upcoming projects, meetings, and business meeting with the Italians in Rome. A successful quarter is also behind me, and I am also happy for all business successes. He informed us of the progress that will happen. Before he concluded, he announced that he was very pleased with the work of each of us, but most pleased with the rapid learning and understanding of her work, respect, and patience of the last employee of the administration. I suddenly got a burning fever, my breathing stopped, my heart was pounding as hard as it was going to run out of me. He turned against me, looked me in the eyes, smiled, and said he is offering me a promotion to start working as his personal assistant. Oh gosh, from the shock I just stared at his eyes, his mouth. Like many times in his vicinity, I didn't even get the simplest word out of my mouth, which was, yes. I smile at him and nodded. He congratulated me and told that I would start with a new job on Monday. Wow, what a night. After he safely brought me home, I was craving for a refreshing shower. The water was warm and the drops of essential oil on my skin made a stunning scent and a great feeling. The smell that wakes you up and makes the moment even more alive. I was finally on my own, where I could finally allow myself to dream about him. I closed my eyes, which was not a good idea. Because of all the champagne that I drink, started to turn in my head. The thoughts have quickly begun to compose to a picture in which I was absolutely convinced that will take me to an incredible experience. The next moment when I finished with my shower, I went to bed. The thought of him quickly finds a way back on my mind. When I remembered the last dance of the evening, how the space between us was filled, when he put his hand over my lower back. I imagined how strong could he grabbed me, how powerful his hands are, and what he can do with them. His carved body over me while I was totally naked on the bed. His eyes were traveling over my body, swallowing me with his eyes. I felt his breath on my neck. It was warm. I could almost sense him, breathing heavy to my ear, whispering. My thought was so real. Every muscle in my body was tense with anticipation. Heavy breathing was caught in my chest when my fingers started sliding down against my pussy. I closed my eyes and put two fingers on my cut. The fingertips were over my clit. My flesh was hot and heavy under the hand, letting my fingers slip between the folds of my sex. I stroked myself, letting my fingers wander further. I have smoothed the silky wetness over my clit. My thighs were tense. I was getting so wet, and I knew that I was close. My fingers were in the depths of me. I made the final circles around my clit. Then I felt an explosion in my body when I came. I had a strong orgasm, and I was satisfied by myself and with the thought of him. I was exhausted and tired, so I fall in deep sleep. Next day when I wake up, I begin to relate events from the previous night. At that time, I realized what I was doing with myself by thinking about him. What I felt in his vicinity grew into something more. I realized that I have developed a deep sexual attraction to him. 
All I needed was to find out what I can do about it. But not at this moment. Now I have to put myself together, do things around him professional. The second thing I was thinking about my boyfriend. He has never made me fell in the way I did make myself felt by all by myself. I don't need him. I was alone anyway. I try calling him, but there was no answer after several tryings. So, I started to write a letter to him, the goodbye letter. 9. The letter. This is a hard time for me. I don't even know how to start. As you noticed, I tried to call you many times to talk with you about certain things. If you don't want to talk to me personally, if you keep avoiding my calls, I don't have another choice but to write you thing I wanted to say to you in a letter, so... It's been months since I've gone to college since I moved into my apartment. I start to live a new life. I go to classes. I have a good job. New friends. My way of life has changed. And over time, I noticed there was no hearing of you. From the time I left, you didn't call me. Maybe at least just to ask me how I am, or I'm happy. I realized that our emotions had cooled a long time ago, and I don't feel anything here anymore. There's no reason to hold on you anymore. The love we had at the beginning was gone. The only other one left was a habit. Pardon my intention was not to end things this way, but you gave me no choice. I don't know what you're doing. Are you thinking much like me? The truth is, I don't care, but I wasn't even enough for you to call or visit me. I'm going from here on my own. I want to live, and I will. There's no room for you anymore, no room for fake feelings and fake love. The time we were together, you were just thinking about yourself. It was all for you. You couldn't hear my needs, what I want. All I wanted was pure love, passion, need to be special to someone. You didn't see it in me. You didn't see how my feelings disappeared. From here, we go our own ways. I will be looking for special moments, special people who will be making my life special. Yes, that is all I have always wanted with you. Goodbye, D. 10. His Personal Assistant Today it is Monday. My alarm clock rang and I crawled out of bed. I stepped in the bathroom and stared in the mirror. I have looked into myself and secretly asked if I was ready to make a new route. It's me. I will do my best to create a successful career and to live with emotion. I remembered the dance, so easy for him to sneak into my mind. But my thoughts on him were no longer innocent. I needed more. But today I am starting to work as his personal assistant, and I have to keep myself professional. No naughty and kinky thoughts. I was a little nervous when I stepped out of the elevator on the top floor. The receptionist pointed me towards the office and told me that Mr. D was expecting me. I took a deep breath and walked in. He invited me in and showed me the chair and told me to sit down. I looked around the office and noticed it was different. There was a new big table with a large pile of documents, a computer and a plate with my name on it. It was officially from today, from now on, I'm his pa. I got a new contract in the signature. He explained to me what it's going to cover my work. I could barely keep steady blood next to him. He was so calm, professional, and he knew exactly what he was doing. Years of experience. When the contract was signed, he leaned back and looked me in the eyes. It looked like he knew what I thinking of him, to see what I fantasize about him. It was like he sees everything. I felt the heat in me growing. I felt how I blushed. In my mind, I saw him coming at me right now, bent over me, just staring at me, slowly taking my clothes off, taking his shirt off, unfastened his belt and let his trousers hit the floor, pushed my panties on side, grabbing my neck and enter in me, fucking me hard. In the end, he says everything is going to be fine between us, would he kiss me too? I'm not supposed to. I have to concentrate. 
When I returned to reality, he was still staring in my eyes. He pushed another document before me. I stared in the document, then he explained to me that this is a non-disclosure agreement that I will find out as his PA. Are there any secrets hidden here? Or maybe he has some secrets in private life. I signed the paper and I pushed it in front of him. He stood up from the table and came to me, reached my hand and wished me good luck with a new working position. He escorted me to my desk like a princess and told me that my first priority was to read and sort his emails. I nodded to him and I immediately took part in my work when he wrote both the personal and business account passwords. First, I'm going to go to his business account. Maybe because I'm not ready to know something personal. Something that could ruin my dreams about him. He sat down at the table, started working on the computer, answering his phone and working on long-distance conversations in a language that I didn't understand. But I think it was the Italian language. 11. Email Words were dancing in front of my eyes. I haven't read so many emails in my life as I have in a few days. And for the end, I have printed them and edited them by the importance. At first, I wasn't sure of myself if I was doing the job right. I was scared and nervous. I got up from the table with dumplings in my throat and headed to his desk. The blood inside me was boiling and I had mixed feelings. Fear, nervousness, expectation, reaction, lust, passion. I was fried. Lust grew inside me. I needed him. I wanted him. I'd like to feel his touches, sense his kisses on my lips. I started to wonder what he thinks of men, or he is hiding in him similar thoughts, desires. I want to know. He doesn't show anything that would give me hope that something could happen between us. When I put the folder with the emails before him, he looked away from the computer and took it to the hands. He started to read the pages. When he was finished with reading, he looked at me, saying that I had done my job perfectly. I was relieved to realize that all my fear was redundant. The look he was giving me has taken me on cloud nine. My legs were shaking and I could barely control that I could stand still and then walk towards my desk. I caught myself staring at him. Sue, what? I didn't give a damn about that. I will be quietly waiting for a moment when I can let myself off the chain. Slowly, very slowly. He lifted his head, and our eyes met for a moment. The time had stopped. Then I saw it in his eyes. What I have been looking for a long time, a spark of lust and desire. I wasn't wrong. I think he wanted it. He wanted me. What if I was wrong? For God's sake, I need to get together. We moved our look away and went back to work. I was concentrated on reading his personal emails. I noticed most of them was from Adrian and Brian. Who are they? When I read the messages, I noticed they were his brothers. There was also a message. Honey, I hope to see you Saturday night at a family gathering. Signed your mother, Gabrielle. I have to admit, I've read almost all the messages, sorted them, and deleted the inconsequential ones. I've noticed that he's a family man spending every Saturday night with his family. When I moved into a folder marked with a star, I stopped in time. The first messages were sent under the name Holly. When I read them, I found out what I was most afraid of. He was married, and Holly is his wife. How did I not notice the wedding ring? So, I look at him, his hands. He doesn't wear it. Why? I took enough time to read all her emails. The messages contained many requests. Come back to me, forgive me, don't forget me. The explanations, I made a mistake. It was the moment of my weakness. I will not repeat the mistake. There was a misunderstanding. Please let me explain. In my head, I started composing the story of emails. Then I noticed an email from a company lawyer which says, 
The document is ready to be signed. Please inform me when you and your wife will come and sign them. Wow, were that the divorce papers? I have worked here long enough now, but I didn't saw his wife. There must be something very wrong between them. I took a look at him. He was perfect, and he wasn't showing any worries. I guess this was one of many things that he has control over it. Okay, back to emails. Another email caught my eye. They were from an online shop called Master. My eyes popped out, and with that kind of look, I stare at him for the longest time. I didn't hear his questions. His words toward me, I wasn't responding at all. I was shocked. 12. His Secret I withdrew my look away from him and looked again at the screen. I started reading, and I realized it was a sex toy store and accessories for different sort of pleasures. He watched me quietly, said nothing. He realized that I have discovered his secret. To my surprise, he wasn't angry. He was still watching me quietly. I watched him and noticed how the questions were making in his head. I saved him from an awkward moment. I told him frankly I wanted to try. With a surprising expression on his face, he nodded. The game is on. When I remember all the pictures and descriptions of toys and accessories for sexual pleasures, silicone whip, anal beads and butt plugs, feathers, bondage, handcuffs, blindfolds, massage oils, vaginal balls, dildos, spreader bar, am I going to run away? Away from the man I really want. BDSM is an umbrella term for a whole host of different types of sex acts and sexual performances. For instance, the use of chains, spanking, restraints, and ropes all fall under BDSM and yet for me so does rough sex, deep-throating and forced cream piece. 13. One Night Stand It is morning. I hear birds singing on my window shelf. Still, my eyes do not accept daylight that penetrates through darkened windows. I feel pain. My body is stiff. Somehow, I get out of bed. With slow steps and painful body, I manage to walk towards the bathroom. Shocked at the sight of myself in the mirror. Unsettled hair, black circles under the eyes, traces of makeup on the pale cheeks and around the eyes. My view was a little better when I saw the bruises that covered a large part of my body. I don't remember what happened, but I have to. I have to remember what happened last night. The hole in my memory is very big. Oh my God, what happened to me last night? I was scared. After a few moments or after a few hours, I had no sense for tea time. The images of last night started to come in front of my eyes. The first thing ever remembered was taking the elevator. When I reached the lowest floor, I went out of the elevator. I remember going past the coffee shop later. This cafe was a place where almost all employees went after the end of working time. I heard my name, someone called me, I remember. How relaxed he sat in the dark corner of the cafe with a glass of whiskey in one hand and with a cigarette in the other. I felt his eyes on me, how he was taking my clothes off with his eyes. I felt his lust. I felt how he wanted me at that moment. I responded to his invitation to join him for a glass of whiskey. We sat in a dark corner surrounded by a soft light with a piece of gentle background music. We sat in silence at first, but later after a few glasses of whiskey, I completely relaxed. The next thing I remember, I was laying on the bed and my hands and legs were tied. Black silk stripes wrapped around both wrists and around the bed pillars, and also my legs they were tied too. I was totally naked and exposed. I was under his control. He was a dominant person and I hadn't noticed that in the months. His beauty, his charm, his kindness, his beautiful words blinded me. I can't believe myself. I think I fell in love with him, secretly. I never said it aloud. I couldn't resist, so I'm here where I am, naked and exposed, tied up 
and without control. I had a blindfold over my eyes. I didn't see anything, but I felt everything much harder and more intense. Every breath on my neck, every kiss, his presence, his touch. In me they triggered a storm, a storm of emotion and feelings. Moments later, I felt a nice soft thing on me. He was moving it slowly over my entire body. The inside of the thighs was the most delicate area in addition to the neck. I was dying of the need, of the need to feel him. My body has become tense with every change in his movements. He had feathers in his hands. I've never felt such tenderness before. I was sexually aroused. I felt the fever growing in me. How my passions are now even more intense and more awaken. It was a strange feeling, but it felt like my body was not obeying my orders. It was like I was drugged. But I wanted him. So I surrendered and let him do whatever he wants to do with me. All of a sudden, I didn't feel the silk around my wrists anymore. My hands were free. I felt his warm breath in front of my face. Somehow, I managed to raise my hands against him to touch him, and all I felt was his sweat. The sweat that made his body even more attractive, sexier. It was an indication that he also enjoys the game. In a game that he wrote his own rules for. And I will not cheat. His muscular body was above me, and his strong hands raised me from a comfortable position. He sat me down, maybe in the chair. I still didn't see anything, my eyes were still covered with a blindfold. I felt his fingers drawing traces on my back, gently, so gently. He moved me, and at the next moment I was on my hands, on a bed pillar, with my butt up in the air legs in a wide spread. I was shocked when I felt a spank on my butt and another one and another one. Somehow, I got used to pain and over time a new feeling popped out. Pleasure, raw pleasure. To felt his passion and lust in such a way was even more exciting. My body was trembling. When he ended with spanking, I felt a gentle kiss on one of my buttocks and later his fingers how they tested my wetness. I was ready, ready for him, and he felt it too. At high speed, he turned me around and pushed me to the bed. Oh my God, only at that moment I felt how big and stiff he was. For a moment, I thought it might tear me apart when he will use a force and passion to penetrate it in me. He started to irritate me, first with his fingers, later with his tongue, he finished with a combination of both. He pressed his sweaty body on mine for a moment, and then I felt his perfection. A couple of times he rubbed over my wetness, and then he was in me with one thrust. I felt all his size and the hardness in me. I felt the way I was wrapped around it. I was shocked. He was perfect in me. First, his fuck was slow. I thought he wanted to make sure that there was no pain present. I enjoyed it, but I felt vulnerable and safe at the same time. When he started his rapid rhythm, I felt his size even more in me. He changed the pose. I was leaning on the bed and he stood behind me and banging hard. He was holding my neck with one hand, and with another he was grabbing my ass. I liked his tomb grip. His animal instinct. I felt everything I could. Love, passion lust, attraction, all listed in one hour or two. All of a sudden, I felt like the ants were traveling through my body, the heat was rising inside me, and he was getting close to his orgasm very quickly. The tense body, the order to come for him now, has taken me to the end. I've experienced the most explosive orgasm. He came into me, and that was the last thing I remembered from last night. I don't know what happened later. I don't know how I got home. All I know is that he was with me. 14. Moving forward. It's been weeks since I saw him. It was a painful memory of how he drugged me and took my power away. 
but he gave me the strength to go on. After that night, I quit my job and moved into a more peaceful environment. I got a job at the store. I worked in a pleasant and familiar environment. And all this time, I've still had my friends with me, but I still remember him sometimes. He was a good leader, successful and powerful. I buried that night. I still go to class, and they will be ended in no time. I've decided to go on a trip. I need a vacation. Just me and Ella and Infinity Beach. Soon, just a few weeks to go. I started to go back to society, go to parties, or just sit in a park on the grass. I've been having a massage of my body occasionally. I needed a stress release, and this thing worked. I'm not ashamed of my body so I could easily remove my clothes from him. I only had panties on. My breasts were exposed before him. For a moment, I felt uncomfortable because I took off my clothes in front of a stranger. He showed me a table where I lay on my stomach. In the background, music was heard. He was a nice person, and we made a connection right away. Talking about personal problems seemed like we were going to be friends. To have a friend touching my naked body? That sounds very strange. But the moment I felt his hands on me, I was relaxed, but deep inside I thought of him. It's been a year since that night. In the meantime, I met him. Maddie was different from the other men. He was a gentleman who had respect for me. He offered me what I was looking for. Attention, respect, conversations, laughter, gentle hugs and passionate kisses. The day has come. The day I dare to dream with my eyes open, on a bright day, among my friends. I didn't follow their conversation in mind, I was with him. In my mind, I made a series of events that could have happened. For me, it was the first time in a very long time. It's been a long time since I felt so insecure. I didn't know what to expect. I was getting ready for a date that Elle was guilty of, kind of. She encouraged me by saying, it's time to go on. Somehow she met us, forwarded the phone numbers, and we started communicating through messages and calls. My first impression. He's the person you fall in love with easily. You can forget the past and start dreaming about the future with him. I was thinking about wearing some fancy clothes, create a perfect picture of me. Stop. I stopped myself from going crazy at that moment. If I want him to meet me, to know me, I have to be me. Dressed simply like every day, with a slight makeup on my face, with my hair tied up, I was ready to go. Elle wished me luck, and yes, I'm going to need it. I was waiting for him at the meeting point. I was looking at the distance and watched a beautiful view, which is good weather offered a glimpse of the sea. Are we ever going to be together at sea, are we? I didn't notice him coming. I felt his hug. I was surprised. Embrace without intimacy. Does that even exist? I was pleasantly surprised. With a smile on my face and a wild imagination, we headed to the nearby club. It was in the middle of the day, so we got a place to seat quickly. I may be imagining too much, but he's different. I didn't know guys like that even existed. A boy who shows interest in talking, listening, we spent a lot of good time together. The moments with him were priceless, and I forgot everything that made me feel bad, sad. Without him, I was incomplete. With Tommy, I was happy and relaxed. I kind of felt that he was enjoying his time with me too. The feelings inside me started waking up. I was able to love someone again. To feel what I thought had died forever. He is a person who has had a difficult past, have a problem trusting people. That's why he's been locking himself in and moving away from people, even away from me. When I thought we were on track, everything returned back almost to the beginning. But when we were together, he was relaxed, and that's all that I wanted. I always imagined how it would be to fall asleep in his arms and wake up the next morning next to him. With one word. Amazing. 
That's why I invited him to my place. I was afraid of his response to the invitation, but I was positively surprised when he told me that he would come. He did come, and I just can't find the words to say how happy I was that evening. Was that all played out? So many kilometers traveled just for me. No. I don't think he's the type of guy who just waits and waits for a chance to get what man usually wants. Sex. And then vanish. 15. You are all I ever wanted. That evening we walked around the city, I showed him the sights of the city. He seemed to like it how small and beautiful it was. The time was late so we headed to my house. I was nervous because I didn't know what to expect from the night. We started slowly. We looked at a movie between which I was receiving gentle touches and hugs. The cuddling between movie was gentle and full of desire. All of a sudden he asked me to kiss him. I kissed him. He kissed me bayback. And I told him not to do it during the film because we don't know what's going on in the movie. He just laughed at my statement. He knew too well that I want him bad. The movie finished. We shut down the computer. And at the next moment, I was in his arms. I woke up in the morning and as I opened my eyes was all clear. In my head. The memories. The memories of the night, on the first night that we spent together. My feelings are growing in me, and deep inside I am afraid to be hurt again. I looked at him, how he was sleeping next to me in my bed. So peaceful he was at that moment. I couldn't believe how quickly he put the trace in my heart. Are his feelings the same? Do I mean something to him? Does he really want me? Questions are popping in my head one by another, making a tornado in my thoughts. I am happy. I kind of feel like I am special to him, by the way, that he acts when he is around me. Makes me feel wanted again. I would like to know things, but I think it is too early to push things like that forward. Sometimes wanted, sometimes ignored. I want to know. But I don't want to push him away. I know I am overreacting. Well, maybe. For a man, it's far too early to say if he feels something, or do we have an opportunity to build something between us slowly? I am the type of person that is way too quick with feelings and emotions over the person which I really like. And I like him very much, even when he is far from me, even when he closes him down. Feelings in me are growing faster than I have expected. I could love him so easily. And if I love, I love with all of my heart, and I think that I love him. I love the man who is sleeping beside me, making me smile, nowing. Mostly all of my problem. Is he real or he will vanish? Will he stay around me even when I am sad, angry, dot, ill? He take all off me. Or just the pretty side. Will he ever say mine when he will be thinking of me? I am daydreaming, still reliving last night. The way that I was felling his desire, lust, passion means something more than just one night stand. Maybe. We do feel the same. When I close my eyes, I am still touching him, wanting more. I want those kisses. I want his strong hands all over my body, grabbing me and showing that he wants to take what is his. I like it how gently and rough he can be at the same time. I want more. Want him all. I would call him mine. The sex was amazing. He knew what he wants, how he wants, with who he wants. And at that moment, all he wanted, he wanted with MME. Kissing me with the desire that I didn't felt for years. Oh my God, how bad I want those kisses again. I want to feel his hands all over my body again grabbing me so strongly, grabbing my neck when he fucked me from behind, showing me that he is in control. When he entered in me slowly, I have sensed his soft side, but when he was entering in me deeper and harder, I saw what he really like, what he wants, how he wants. The passion was growing between us with every next stoke we were close together, 
how he was changing positions, entering in me deeper. He was close, I knew that I could feel it. How he was becoming bigger and harder in me. I did what he asked ma'am, let him finished in my emoth, saw in his eyes how he enjoyed, the taste of him on my lips, I want him, all of him. The sex was amazing, and could go with another one right now dot aching, up all horny. Shit, what is he doing to Mem? I didn't feel like this for years. I want to feel that passion towards me again. I want to see it in his eyes and feel it in me. It was a cute question. Was I sure that I want him? Was I ready? I was sure, I was ready. Every day I want him to make me feel special and wanted. Well, I need a hug too. I need to be close to him. Yes, I want his cuddles too. The voices in my head are keep telling me. Don't be so negative dot et. Things run normally. Slowly, when we are not together, I am lost, letting the bad thoughts eating me from inside. Am I the only one for him? What does he want from me? Does he want us to be? But then we are together, we are close. We talk, we laugh like we are the real thing. Like he said to me that I will need to chase him. I will till. I am out of my energy and out of love. 16. Falling apart. I'm falling apart. Without him, I feel as empty as a part of me is dead. I miss him. He was the one who put me in a good mood, smiling me to tears. I felt alive with him, and I forgot the moments that I was suffering from. I miss his actions, his hugs. I miss all of it, all of him. Nobody knows how it hurts. Nobody knows how scared I am every night. No one knows how I cry every night because he's not there with me. How it hurts the thought that I might have hurt him without realizing it at that moment. I'm lost without him. I admit, I'm ready to do anything to fix things. I think everyone deserves a second chance. So, Tommy, please forgive me. At least, let's talk. I'm losing myself. I'm falling. How do you think I feel? I lost him, him who understood me. I shared my life with him, my pain. So I don't think the problem was just me, his past was undiscovered, he had his own problems. He didn't trust me enough, or maybe he just didn't see anything in me. But why all that tender moments then? That kind of questions will take me to the breaking point. I have lost my heart with him already. So I guess there is nothing left for me here. I will go finish my pain and let him be happy like he deserves. My heart is weak. And it won't survive all this. I'm just grateful to have friends who are at my side. Normal that they advised me to move on. But I couldn't. I haven't completely freed myself on the massage. I felt his hands on me. With a masseuse, we're getting closer together with every conversation, every message. We both have a difficult situation from which we can't find a painless exit. We're listening to each other and standing next to each other. I have to accept the fact that he's gone out of my life. He left me alone with a broken heart. I hope he took a piece with him to remember me. In my head is a mess, and I have to try to go on without Tommy. 17. The Massage He was sent to me as guardian angel and I to him. We felt a bond between us at the moment. A friendship that will only continue to be more powerful. We've been brought together by pain and suffering. We will find a way together. A chance to go forward happy. I went to him for a body massage. It was kind of therapy for losing the stress that was in me. I have accepted the feeling of other hands on my body. His hands were strong and gentle. With a massage of my naked body, he was taking away my stress, my pain. I was relaxed. With his hands on my back, I didn't think of Tommy at that moment. The massage did help me relax and forget about him as he said to me at the beginning. So, 
About the massage. At first, it was a classic massage. I have never been to a massage before, but I had a feeling that this is not just a massage. He asked me if I would completely leave his hands free to do with me what he wants. I just nodded. I have let him explore my body, taking me away from my thoughts. It was good therapy. But I couldn't shut down my feelings towards him. I was broken, that is how he left me. I will wait for the time to come and heal me. I don't want to rush into something that will hurt me even more. When his hand was traveling over my body, over my sensitive spots, I have let myself go. Touching my breasts, grabbing them, licking my nipples. It felt amazing. His hands were a miracle, a cure for men. When he slowly moves down to my belly and deeper down. Then he started to touch my pussy. He spread my legs so he could have all the space that he needed. Touching me, licking me, driving me insane. I was close, close to the explosion. I started to touch him too, his muscular body. He has become tense and hard. By the size of his cock, I could see that he was enjoying too. We both finished with orgasm. I was feeling relaxed, but I also figured that I didn't forget. We are friends now, and we talk every day. We do not feel the love between us. There are no strong feelings between us. We just did things to forget the real situation that kills us deep inside. The touches, kisses, fuck were good, but there were no emotions in it. I think only hugs were real. I don't care about it, we are just friends, and that is all we will ever be. It is good to have a friend that you could talk to, that you can call him at any time, that you can send him a text and get an immediate response to it, the friend that feels you, your pain, you. You accept a good and bad side of you, on good and bad days, happy and sad, knowing that he is always with you, by your side breathing with you. Knowing that someone wants to talk to you, wants to know you are doing or wants to see you, whether they pick up the phone to send you a quick text or stop by your house to catch up. Someone or something reminded them of you specifically. It just feels really nice to know that you have been on someone's mind and that they care enough to let you know that. Epilogue. She has let the pain destroy her many times. She has healed many times, letting the bad things go. But she only loved three times, the first love, long love, and him. She feels bad for all the thing that he couldn't see in her. She and him were lost in the past. She will never stop to hope for him. She wishes you only the best. She wishes you all. And what about her? She is staying here still in pain of losing him as her friend and lover. She will let herself dream about him, about him and her. Crying almost every night, waking up every day with him on her mind, as her first thought in the morning and the second thought through the day. She didn't tell him that she loves him, but he saw it, that's why he ran away from her. Love is such a beautiful thing. Let love reach you, open up, live. She need love, attention the kind of he gave it to her. He gave her the feeling that he really wants her that he really wants her close to him, with him, giving her mixed signals. She was lost in them. She is killing herself with all of the questions, with questions that she will never get an answer. She is sorry that he has to deal with her, sorry that she had took his time, forcing him into things that he didn't want. She just wanted him to see her how she cares about him, standing by his side all the time he wanted her. Being loved and know that you have someone by your side is the most beautiful thing. It is priceless. Being sad and in pain because of strong feelings, scared to feel, scared into love, love me. But I still think that everyone deserves a second chance to prove, to be loved, to love, to talk about it. Someone told me something that I cannot forget. There are three things that can never came back. Time, words, opportunity. There are three things that you must never lost. Hope, patience, honesty.
There are three things that stays priceless. Love, family, friendship. This one is for you. The end.